All right, today's video, we can talk boats. I um, had several boats, big boats. And for the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years, I've had no boat. My wife and I go bank fishing. We've got a bunch of local ponds, lakes, forest preserves, that kind of stuff. And it's all fine and dandy in the spring until summer hits and all the vegetation comes in and now you're trying to whip a lure 40 feet off the shore just to get to water you can actually fish. And I like throwing a frog as much as the next guy, but it gets old after a while. <clears throat> so, I figured we'd pick up this little boat and something I could throw on the back of the Ranger, throw on my excursion, throw on a car trailer, whatever. Uh, something quick and easy we can use locally. So, here you are. This is a Bass Raider 10 NXT made by Pelican. These things are impossible to find new, come to find. Um, and if you find ones for sale locally, at least around here, that are in decent shape, they're going for more than new ones are. So I did manage to hunt one down. Took Bass Pro Shops nine days to get it here to me. Loaded it up on my truck, started unwrapping it, and found all kinds of damage, including a hole punched right through the hull. So, I threw an absolute fit. And this is the store model they had on display. So that's what I wound up getting. So, seeing as there's a rampant cult following of all these people buying $500 boats and then putting $2,000 of stuff on them, why should I be any different? So, let's do a quick rundown of uh, everything I've done to it. I picked it up Monday, today's Wednesday, so I've had 48 hours to get this done. <laughs> and here we are. Uh, first thing I did is I put some keel guards on it. I know these things are durable and thick polyethylene and whatnot, but it's brand new, no scratches, and I figure what can it hurt. So I got one running up the nose. I got two strips down there on each pontoon. Uh, what that stuff is, it's PVC lattice. It's an inch wide, quarter inch thick. Ordered it online at Home Depot. Four strips of it was $15. I ordered four, they sent me five, so I had enough to run a couple strips up the nose up there. So that was the first thing I did. Um, got a 1,000 amp hour lithium battery in there. Got the battery gauge, the USB charger, there's nothing fancy there. I did tear all the wiring out of the boat and replace it with my own wiring. So what I did is I ran six gauge wire and put Anderson connectors everywhere. So everything is universal. If I want the battery in the front, battery in the back, motor in front, motor in the back, it's all just plug and play. Um, they claim it was eight gauge wire. Well, it may be 8-gauge wire nowadays. Years ago, this was more like 10-gauge wire with just heavier insulation to make it seem like 8-gauge wire. This is 6-gauge wire. That's what I put in there. There's a reference for you visual learners. Well, so, got to be more gooder. Um, the other big thing I did is I was trying to come up with some sort of system track on here gear rail and I know this is nothing revolutionary I know there was at least one bass boat manufacturer in the late 80s that ran t-track on their rails but this is aluminum t-track if you're into woodworking uh, you use a lot in table saws cross cut sleds etc etc it's aluminum it's light it's incredibly rigid and what it does afford you is an infinite number of mounting possibilities for anything you could possibly think of without having to drill any more holes in your boat. So these are screwed in with the factory holes, stainless steel screws. And I ran a layer of that VHB tape in between the two. A, it helps it stick better. And that VHB tape, once you tighten this down, it literally squishes all around the, fuck, all the screw, the threads and everything and seals it up. Like I said, um, this is just some shock cord I've got on here for the rods while they're in transport. But again, if you wanted to move or make adjustments, it's just that simple to adjust however you want. Um, I think it's a fantastic idea, but I would. I did it. Uh, I've got a little, made a little aluminum paddle mount over here for the paddle. So that's mounted and there's no holes drilled on the side anywhere. Literally just riveted to that little piece of aluminum I bent up. 
and no holes, everything mounted to the track. Uh, I've got a Garmin Striker 4 Plus clear view on here. Also mounted right into my track with a ram arm. Um, the transponder, transceiver, I'm sorry. I 3D printed up these clamps. And that's obviously the down position, but to transport, you just loosen these. This arm will now then swing up and it'll just stow away right on the side of the rail right there for transport. Swing it down, snug these up, and you're good to use it. I 3D printed this adapter. Uh, it's an interference fit on a piece of half inch PVC and there's a little stainless screw right down on there too just for good measure. But this is my answer to the Scotty arm that everybody uses. Because um, this cost me like 12 cents of filament to 3D print. I also 3D printed all these knobs, uh, a bunch of stuff, those rod holders, we'll get there. But anyway, um, if anybody wants one of these mounts, let me know. I'd be happy to 3D print you one off, just cover postage and I'll send it out to you. Uh, works fantastic, it clamps right in, it's got all the, the detents that the factory Garmin one had, but it's just, uh, and I even made it, you know, a little hydrodynamic, the little point on there, not that it's going to make any difference, but... Yeah, just a piece of half inch PVC. And again, mounts right onto my T-Track rails. Easy peasy. What else? Uh, put the foam mat in it. This is kind of the same material, like those exercise mats. It's, it's light, but it's, you know, half inch thick and cushy, so that should work fine. Got six rods on here. The OE takes two, I usually take four. And plenty of room. Like I said, I've got a uh, shock cord front and back to keep them locked in during transport. Uh, on the back here, I said I 3D printed these rod holders. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do permanently. So for now, I just got you know the, the clampy clampy setup. It'll work for now and I can move them around until I figure out what I want and go from there. Got a 54 pound water snake tracer on here with the, uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, that. So we'll see how that does. What else? Oh, battery for my depth finder. Um, I 3D printed the sunshade too. Batteries in this little plastic ammo can here along with other odds and ends I got extra plugs for the boat uh, extra shot cord extra fuses extra circuit breaker for the main battery kind of whatever stuff you need while you were out uh, speaking of plugs I did the did do the scupper plug nothing groundbreaking there either everybody does it um, as far as the plugs for the pontoons uh, Pelican does give you OEM plugs, but they're up here in the front, so I guess you need to stand the boat on its nose and flip it upside down to drain the pontoons, which doesn't seem like the most convenient idea in the world. So I put these little plugs in the back here. Now, I know everybody puts the, the plug with the mounting plate and the screw in, and that's all fine, but my, my thought process here is this is only a half inch plug, and that's obviously a half inch hole. My thought is, I want to go with the smallest hole possible. That way, should anything happen to these and I have to put a bigger plug in, I have the option to go up to, I don't know, a 5 8 plug, a 3 quarter inch plug, a 1 inch plug, or the plug everybody else runs with the plate. Um, I don't see any reason to drill a giant hole to begin with. Start with a small hole, and then if something goes wrong, you have the options to make a bigger hole and fix it. So that was my thought there. I mean, a half inch hole is plenty big to drain water out of your pontoons. Um, the other thing I did is when um, when I picked the when I went to pick this up and saw the damaged one, there was a bunch of damage on the nose up here, and the hull was separated for about a foot here on that boat. And in looking in there, you could see a bunch of staples that were popped, and actually. 
everywhere you see these bumps, that's a staple that's got one of the legs broken off. So one of the legs went in and bent over, the other one snapped off. Well, that just leaves a hole. They pull the broken leg out, but there's just a hole left there. Um, obviously, somewhere for water to get in. And I didn't see any sort of adhesive or epoxy between the upper shell and the bottom, the hull shell. So I think they're literally just sandwiched together and stapled, and they throw this piece of trim on. So it's really no surprise that you wind up with water in the hull. So I pulled all this trim off, and <laughs> I took silicone. Um, I use I use aquarium silicone, a because I always have it on hand. I got a bunch of aquariums inside, but this stuff is I got uh, it's almost like RTV. It's got way more adhesive in it than your basic 100% silicone. <laughs> so anyway, so I pulled this trim piece all off. Then I ran a bead of silicone on top of the staples, a bead below the staples. I packed it in between, you know, the, anywhere there was a crack the whole way around. Then when I put this trim back on, I ran a bead on the inside all the way down. So as this went on, it all just kind of oozed out and sealed everything. <clears throat> so it took about a tube and a quarter to do the whole boat. And it surely is not going to hurt anything. And if it helps keep the water out of the hull, super. Now, pro tip, I'm pretty sure when the factory puts this on, this rubber, they've got it sitting in an oven, and they probably get it up to about 300 degrees where it's nice and flexible and stretchy. Because when you take this off, and you pull all these screws out and take the whole thing off, it shrinks by about two feet. I literally had to tie this boat off to the back of my truck to pull hard enough to get the screws to line up in the original holes. So if you're going to do this, pull it out on your black asphalt driveway and wait till it's 105, because I'm sure that'll make it easier. Um, I did get it all back on, everything in the original holes, but uh, hindsight being 2020, I would have went about it differently. But nonetheless, it's in there. Uh, what else? I don't know what else. I think that's about it, really. Oh, I made a uh, made the little dolly for it. Nothing special there, just the some $9 Amazon wheels, a piece of 5 horse by 6 decking. And I had some uh, half-inch marine grade plywood laying around, so I made uh, made these little rails. Just A, it keeps the thing from flipping over on its side, and you can, it's, you know, it's like a kickstand. You don't have to have a second person line it up for you. You just drop the boat on it, and everything lines up. <coughs> uh, what else? I think that's about it. Got the basics on here, cooler, tackle box. The old lady wanted a fancy cushy seat, so that had to happen. These new Ergo 360 seats do seem pretty comfortable though, so I'm gonna see how it goes. Um, it seems comfortable sitting in the garage, but half a day on the water is a different story, but we'll see. These things are handy as can be too if you've uh, never tried them. I think that's about it. Yeah, well, anyway, there you have it. If you got any questions, um, you want a 3D printed transducer adapter, or anything else on here, let me know. I'd be happy to uh, send you one out. You got any ideas, stuff, something I haven't done that I didn't think of, let me know. You have any questions, let me know. All right, later.